Hi everyone, today we are going to cover a few topics having to do with lines. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to find the inclination of a line. So the inclination of a line is just a positive angle, which we'll call theta, measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. So much as you measure an angle in the unit circle from the x-axis going counterclockwise. Um, there is a formula to help us find this. If a non-vertical line has an inclination of theta and a slope of m, then the slope equals the tangent of the inclination. So if you know the slope of your line, you can find the angle using arc tangent. However, you do need to remember that the range of arc tangent is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the answer that you might get, you might need to adjust um, depending on what the inclination of your line is, which is why I always recommend to do at least a rough, rough sketch of your line. So let's try these first two examples together. So first of all, I'm going to do a really rough sketch of this x um, minus y equals 2, where if you put this into slope intercept, it's y equals x minus 2. So I know that it looks something like this. So I can see that this um, inclination that we're going to find is this angle right here. Remember, it's between the x-axis um, to the line moving counterclockwise. So remember the formula we know is m equals the tangent of uh, your inclination. I know that the slope of this line is 1, so I can plug that into our formula. I can say 1 equals the tangent of theta, which means that theta equals the arc tangent of 1. Now we can do this either in degrees or radians, but hopefully you remember that um, the arc tangent of 1 is uh, pi over 4 radians, or you could say 45 degrees. Now if I look at our uh, line, this angle does make sense. We definitely are going to have an acute angle here, so these answers will work. Now let's look at uh, part B. So let's draw a quick sketch of this. So if I rewrite this equation in slope-intercept, I get y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So I know that I have a line that looks something like this, more or less. So if you look at what our angle of inclination would be, it's going to be um, an obtuse angle. So I know that whatever number um, our calculator gives us, for theta, it's not going to work. We have to adjust it for this angle. So just keep that in mind. So now let's use the same formula. Once again, we know that the um, slope is negative 2 thirds. So we can say negative 2 thirds equals tangent of theta. So we can say theta is the arc tangent of negative 2 thirds. Now this will give us, we'll say, a decimal approximation of about negative 0 0.588, um, which obviously is not this angle. So first of all, we need a positive angle, and uh, we need it to be an obtuse angle rather than an acute one. So what I can do is I can use the absolute value of this as our reference angle. So we'll think of it as a reference angle, more or less. So our reference angle is just going to be positive 0 0.588, and then I can see that to find this angle, I would do uh, 180 degrees or pi radians, and then I'll subtract the reference angle to get there. So I can say that our angle is pi minus 0 0.588, and that will give us approximately 2.55. Now it might make a little bit more sense for you to do this one in degrees. Um, so for example, uh, for this first angle right here, if you find it in degrees, it would be about negative 33.69 degrees. 
So this is clearly not negative 33.69. So you can think about it as this reference angle from here to here being um, positive 33.69. So you could do 180 degrees minus that reference angle. And you can get approximately uh, 146 point, we'll say 0.3 degrees. So if that makes more sense to you or, you know, it helps you to visualize um, the angle that you're given uh, based on the angle you're trying to find, maybe try doing it in both radians and degrees. Either way is okay. Both answers are equivalent. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and give these two problems a try. Okay, let's go ahead and check our work. So for that first um, graph, you can see that our angle of inclination is an acute, an acute angle. And so what your calculator tells you is your, going to be your answer here. So you just do arc tangent of 4 over 5, and you get 0.6747 radians, or about 38.7 degrees. However, for the second one, if you do a really rough sketch, you can see that our angle of inclination is obtuse, so bigger than 90. So you can use arctangent and you'll get negative pi over 4. So use the absolute value of that for your reference angle. And then you can find this angle by doing pi minus pi over 4. Or you could do uh, 180 minus 45. So either of these answers is correct. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is how to find the angle between two lines. So it says if two non-perpendicular lines have slopes m1 and m2, then the tangent of the angle that's between the two lines, the tangent of theta, equals the absolute value of m2 minus m1 all over 1 plus m1 times m2. So we will be using our tangent again to help us find this value. But really, it's just finding the two slopes and plugging into the formula. But for these, I also recommend um, doing a really rough sketch of your two lines just to see if the angle that you get as your answer makes sense. So this one says find the, the angle between 2x minus y equals 4 and 3x plus 4y equals 12. So it's important to note that this is the first one they said and this is the second one. So I'm going to rewrite that first one as y equals 2x minus 4. Um, allowing me to see the slope. And I'm going to rewrite that second equation as y equals negative uh, 3 fourths x plus 12. So if I do a really rough sketch of these two lines, I could see that my first line is something like this, and my second line is something like uh, this and I want to find the angle from the first one to the second one. So that's what I'm trying to find. So uh, let's start by plugging those values into our formula. Tangent of theta equals the absolute value of, the, of m2, which is negative 3 fourths, minus m1, which is 2, all over 1 plus m1 times m2. Uh, here we can simplify that down. So we have the tangent of theta, and it becomes 11 halves if you simplify down what you see inside the absolute value signs. Um, and now we're going to use arctangent to find theta. Okay, and we end up with theta equals 1.3909. Uh, which is about 79.7 degrees. Um, so, I, so I can double check this to make sure that this angle makes sense with our graph. And it does, which means we are all done. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, so I graphed the first one in red, the second one in blue, and I could see that we want to find this angle from red to blue. So the slope of our second equation is negative 3 halves. The slope of our first equation is 
four fifths, plug it into your formula and use arc tangent. And you should get roughly 1.4841, which is about 85.0 degrees. All right, so now we're gonna learn a new formula and it's to help us find the distance between a point and a line. Um, so of course, the shortest distance between any point and a line is that perpendicular distance. So that's really what we're finding here. And um, notice that we have a point x1, y1, and the line is in general form. So ax plus by plus c equals zero. So we don't typically see linear equations written like this. So if it's not, just make sure you rewrite it in this form. And remember those a, b, and c values. The a is just the coefficient of x, b is the coefficient of y, and c is your constant. Um, so if you have a point and you have a linear equation written in general form, uh, the formula for the distance between those two things is the absolute value of a times x1 plus b times y1 plus c all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. All right, let's give this first one a try. Um, here we want the distance between the point 4, 1 and the line y equals 2x plus 1. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is put our linear equation into that general form. Um, so I'll say negative 2x plus y minus 1 equals 0. And now we're just going to use that formula. So d equals the absolute value of a, which is negative 2, times x1, which is 4, plus b, which is 1, times y1, which is 1, plus c, which is negative 1, all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if we simplify that, we get 8 over root 5, which is approximately 3.58 units. And there you have it. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Here you go. Um, so the one thing really that's um, slightly tricky is just remembering that you do need to put your linear equation into general form, but then it's just plugging into the formula and um, simplifying. So make sure you understand how to do this because now we're going to try an application of um, this distance formula that we just talked about. Um, so here we have a triangle on a coordinate plane, triangle ABC. And they would like us to find two things. First, to find this altitude um, from B to the line AC. And then they would like us to find the area of the entire triangle. So just um, strategy-wise, you can see that that altitude, we're, we're going to be using that formula we just did, the distance between a point and a line. Um, however, we don't know the equation of this line, but luckily we do know two of the coordinates. So we can really easily find um, the equation of line AC. So that's the first thing that we're going to need to do. For line AC, the first thing we need to do is find the slope. So we can use our slope formula. Uh, so we could say 2 over 0 over 5 plus 3 equals 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth. And then we can use point slope. We could say y minus 0 equals 1 fourth times x plus 3 and we can distribute and simplify. Um, so here we don't want to have one fourth as our coefficient. So I'm going to distribute um, and multiply everything by four. So four y equals x plus three because it would be three fourths. Um, so and this would be one fourth, so it just becomes x. So I multiplied both sides by four to clear my fractions, and now I just need to put it in standard form. So we can say x minus 4y plus 3 equals 0. So now we have the equation of AC and we have the point that we're using as 0, 4. So now we're just going to use that we just learned. So instead of D, I'm going to see, I'm going to call it H because that's what we're actually finding. That's the altitude or the height of that triangle. So we can say uh, absolute value of 1 times 0 plus negative 4 times 4 plus 3 
all over the square root of 1 squared plus negative 4 squared. So we're going to simplify that and we get 13 over square root of 17 units. And I know that's not rationalized, but we'll leave it how it is just for right now. Um, because we are going to be using this also for part B, which is find the area of the entire triangle. So we know that for part B, that the area of a triangle is one half times its base times its height. So we know the height, but now we have to find the base, which is essentially just the distance from A to C. So here we're just going to use the normal distance formula. Um, and we're going to use the coordinates, negative 3, 0, and 5, 2. So we have 5 plus 3 squared plus 2 minus 0 squared. And if we simplify that, that gives us the square root of um, 8 squared plus 2 squared, which is 2 root 17 when you simplify. So you can see here that... Um, the square root of 17 from our, uh, di the distance from A to C will cancel out with that uh, square root of 17 with our height. So that's why it was okay to leave it temporarily. Um, so now let's plug this into our area formula. Area equals 1 half times the base, which is 2 root 17, times the height, which is 13 over root 17. And the area of that triangle is just going to be 13 units squared. There you go. So you can see um, a really nice application of finding the distance between a point and a line. All right, last problem. Go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so here you can see that I um, sketched out the picture just to see what it looks like and the first thing that we need to do is find that height so I had to create the linear equation for uh, line segment AC so I could use our distance um, formula between a point and a line and I got approximately 3.58 units and then um, I used our distance formula to find the base of the triangle and then I multiply and I plugged that into the area of a um, triangle formula and you get approximately 12.01 units. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for watching.